as why is Korea divided? The history of the war-torn peninsula as North and South prepare for talks. Everything you need to know about the divide between the two countries and the war that cemented it. North and South Korea are set to hold their first summit in more than a decade after high-level talks. It will be only the third meeting between the leaders of the two countries since the Korean War. It is a warming in relations between the nations, which have never signed a peace treaty despite the conflict ending in the 1950s. South Korea's President Moon Jae-in, who came to power in May, had pledged to engage North Korea in talks in a bid to dial down their neighbor's nuclear ambitions. And in a recent and unexpected visit to China, North Korea's Kim Jong-un reportedly maintained he is committed denuclearization. But the divisions between the two countries stretch back to the end of World War II, and are based on political ideology as well as bloody conflict. And while the South has flourished in recent years as a democracy supported by the United States, the North has seen isolation from the international community and has pursued an aggressive military first policy. Here's an overview of the origins of the divide, the bitter war that cemented it and their differing fortunes since. Japanese Rule and World War II The short-lived Korean Empire had been integrating more with the Empire of Japan at the end of the 19th century, and by 1905 a treaty formally made Korea a protectorate of Japan. Japan annexed the country with another treaty in 1910, officially taking over sovereignty of its land and people. A provisional government of the Republic of Korea was set up in exile in China by those opposed to Japanese rule. In Korea, a series of anti-Japanese protests were put down by soldiers, and over the next decades Japan strengthened its military rule of the peninsula. Following the Sino-Japanese War of 1937 and the outbreak of World War II Japan's rulers cracked down on Korean culture, and stopped the teaching of the Korean language and history. During World War II, tens of thousands of Korean men were conscripted into the Japanese military. Up to up to 200,000 girls and women, mainly from Korea and China, were forced into sexual slavery for Japanese soldiers as so-called comfort women. The provisional government organized resistance groups against the colonial rulers. In 1940 the Korean Liberation Army was formed as the government declared war on Japan and Germany. Japan surrendered in 1945 after the United States dropped atomic bombs on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, ending the Second World War. Following the unconditional surrender of the Japanese, the victorious Allies split the Korean Peninsula into two occupational zones. The United States took over the area to the south of the 38th parallel, while the Soviet Union took the area to the north. The original plan was to work towards a united independent Korea, but the Soviet-US Joint Commission overseeing the transition failed to came to agreement as Cold War tensions between the two superpowers deepened. Fearing communist expansion in the region, the US established a military government in the south while the Soviets oversaw the formation of the Provisional People's Committee led by Kim Il-sung in the North. In the North, land was redistributed amongst the people, and key industries were nationalized. The U.S. military government said hundreds of thousands fled south as refugees. By 1947, the U.S. brought the issue of what to do with the peninsula to the U.N., against the wishes of the Soviet Union. The UN passed a resolution stating that free elections should be held and foreign troops withdrawn. The Soviet Union boycotted the vote. Elections were planned in the South only, but strikes and protests broke out as activists feared separate elections would lead to the permanent division of the country. An uprising against the plans by Jeju Islanders from April 1948 was met with force by the South Korean military resulting in up to 30,000 people being killed, around 10% of the island's population. The general election went ahead in May 1948, and in August, the Republic of Korea officially took over from the U.S. military. The first president, anti-communist Syngman Rhee, had previously been head of the provisional government of the Republic of Korea. In response, 
In September 1948 the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was declared in the North, with Kim Il-sung as leader. Both governments claimed sovereignty of the whole of the Korean Peninsula. Soviet forces withdrew from the North in 1948, while U.S. troops pulled out in 1949. The Korean War On June 25, 1950, North Korean forces crossed the 38th parallel and headed south following a string of bloody border clashes between the two countries. The North Korean military was well equipped by Stalin's Soviet Union, and contained veterans from the communist victory in the Chinese Civil War. They advanced with tanks and heavy artillery along the border line. In contrast, the South Korean military was poorly equipped, had no tanks and few aircraft. The invasion was the first major military action of the Cold War, and two days later refled South Korea's capital as the North Korean army swept across the country. As Seoul fell, retreating South Korean forces executed tens of thousands of alleged communists held in prisons, as well as suspected communist sympathizers who had been enrolled in the Bodo League, a re-education program. It is estimated up to 200,000 people were massacred by South Korean forces. On June 27, the UN passed a resolution recommending that member states provide military support to South Korea. North Korean forces overran 90% of the South before the US-led counterattack, and on September 25, South Korean forces retook Seoul. South Korean units crossed over the 38th parallel on October 1, with UN forces following a week later, pushing north until they reached the border with Communist China. In November, the Chinese entered the war, and together with the North Korean army forced the UN forces back south. In 1951 the war ground to a stalemate near to the 38th parallel but fighting war on for the next two years while armistice negotiations continued. American bombing destroyed huge numbers of buildings in North Korea, crippling the country's infrastructure and forcing the population to build homes and factories underground. The Korean Armistice Agreement was signed on July 27, 1953. It created a four-kilometer-wide buffer zone between the two states called the Korean Demilitarized Zone. The new border crossed the 38th parallel diagonally, and reflected the position the two forces held at the end of the war. A peace treaty was never signed, and both governments still claim sovereignty across the whole peninsula. The conflict resulted in the death of more than 2.5 million people. Autocratic South Korean President Syngman Rhee remained in office until 1960 when a student uprising forced him from power. After a period of instability, General Park Chung-hee seized control in a military coup and ruled until his assassination in 1979. It took until 1987's June Democracy Movement for South Korea to move away from an autocratic system of government. The country was invited to join the UN in 1991. It hosted the Olympics in 1988 and the World Cup, jointly with Japan, in 2002. The current president, Moon Jae-in, was elected in 2017. In North Korea, Kim Il-sung concentrated his power after the war, executing dissenters and building a personality cult around himself. He was nicknamed Great Leader and the population was taught to venerate him. It is Kim Il-sung's policy of judge political independence and economic self-reliance, that has remained the country's ideology to this day, and has resulted in its isolation from the global community. Until the 1960s, economic growth in North Korea was greater than that of South Korea. By the late 1980s, however, the economy had slowed, and it came close to collapse in 1991 when the Soviet Union fell and aid was suddenly cut off. Il-sung died in 1994 from a sudden heart attack, and supreme power passed to his son Kim Jong-il. His son continued the personality cult of his father, being declared dear leader and promoting a military-first approach. The North Korean economy under Kim Jong-il was devastated by a massive famine, with hundreds of thousands of people dying from starvation and disease, 
and the nation left reliant on foreign aid. The country has still not recovered with a U.S. delegation in 2011 estimating that a third of children there are malnourished. North Korea became more insulated. Kim Jong-il died in 2011, and his son Kim Jong-un took over as leader. According to South Korean reports, Kim may have purged more than 300 leading figures from the government to secure his position of power. These include Defense Minister Hyong yong -il who was reportedly killed with anti-aircraft guns in 2015, Security Minister Oh Sang-Han, who was reportedly executed with a flamethrower in 2014, and Kim's uncle Jang Song-Thek, who it is claimed was eaten alive by 120 starving dogs. He is also believed to have ordered the fatal poisoning of his half-brother, Kim Jong-Nam, at an airport in Malaysia in February 2017. Soviet Union for help in developing a nuclear weapon. The request was refused, but the Soviets agreed to train scientists for a peaceful nuclear program. Its first research reactor came online in 1965, and a second was built in 1979. In 1994, North Korea came to an agreement with the USA to freeze and eventually dismantle its nuclear weapons program. But Kim Jong-il's government admitted in 2002 that it had continued the research. The North Koreans insisted the presence of U.S. nuclear weapons based across the border in South Korea justified their secret weapons development. Meanwhile George W. Bush's U.S. administration named North Korea as part of an axis of evil alongside Iran and Saddam Hussein's Iraq. In 2006 North Korea announced that it had conducted its first nuclear weapons test. It carried out further tests in 2009, 2013 and 2 in 2016. In 2017 the country carried out its seventh test, and claimed it was a hydrogen bomb capable of being launched on an intercontinental ballistic missile. Alongside the development of nuclear warheads, North Korea has been developing the missiles needed to deliver them. In tests at the end of 2017, its Hwasong-15 missile traveled 621 miles and reached an altitude of 2,796 miles. The country described it as the most powerful it has fired to date. In response, President Donald Trump branded Kim Jong-un as Rocket Man, later saying, It is a situation we will handle we will take care of it. In his 2018 New Year address, Kim hit back at Trump, saying it's not a mere threat but a reality that I have a nuclear button on the desk in my office, all of the mainland United States is within the range of our nuclear strike. Trump replied with a message on Twitter, tweeting, Kim Jong-un just stated that the nuclear button is on his desk at all times. Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button, but it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works.